Hi guys, this is Miss Izzy with your monthly book talk from the Honey County Library. So today I'm going to talk about poetry because April is Poetry Month and this year is the 25th anniversary of Poetry Month. And um, poetry comes in very many, many very different forms and in a way poetry is like painting except instead of painting with colors with paintbrushes and paint you paint with words which allows the poet the author to be maybe more free about how they use words and to create impressions with the words they use and there are many many different um, forms of poetry so before I start talking to you about all the books that I have here, um, you will watch a video and it's the video of a book I read earlier this month and the title is Shadow Play Night Haiku by Penny Harter and it's illustrated by Jeffrey Green. And this one is um, kind of a spooky story and the title is Shadow Play Night Haiku haiku and it's written by Penny Harter and illustrated by Jeffrey Green. So a haiku is a form of poetry that is uh, written in three lines with a certain number of syllables in each line and um, you know it can be a little bit flexible so you will notice that some of them are a little bit longer and others are a little bit shorter but you will notice that everything is written in three lines and then the next um, part of the story comes again in three lines. Shadow Play Night Haiku by Penny Harter illustrated by Jeffrey Green Mountain thunder, lightning between the stars. Evening rain in the foam of the waterfall, white petals. Before sleep, I open the window to let in the rain. In the dark kitchen, the open refrigerator door swings shut. Far away, the sound of running water, I snuggle deeper. In the tunnel of the bed, my feet so far away. A train whistle, far down the tracks, the red light, railroad crossing, the long glint of the moon. Out the train window, the night trees darker than the sky. Through the telescope, the mountains on the moon, grandmother yawns. Lunar eclipse, the shadow moves on the watcher's upturned face. Midnight sirens, three dogs howl in harmony. Distant thunder, overhead a satellite moves in the dark. Country road, all the stars pour through the car radio. By the roadside, one cow lifts her face into our headlights. All night long, light shines in the eyes of the carousel ponies. The fortune teller traces the line in my palm to a star. Whistling, whistling, fireworks follow one another into the night. Only letting in the cat until the morning star. The cat wakes me up, chasing his tail in the dark. All night rain 
On the bed, the cat licks his fur. Across my bed flickers from the television and moonlight. The monkey's face between my hands, winter twilight. All night storm, my room fills with snow light. Deep in the pine, the deserted nest, evening breeze. Moonless night, as many crickets singing as the stars. At dusk, a cloud of fireflies rises the Milky Way. Nightfall, the coolness of dirt between toes, dew falling on the clotheslines, a towel glimmers. Out after dark, dark, chasing flashlight circles across the grass. Shooting star, the river still frozen. Full moon, light in the cracks of the sidewalk. The snowman's smile melts in the moonlight. Spring thaw. Snow finished, the blaze of winter stars. Out the plane window, all those headlights going somewhere. Distant street lights, constellations moving past. Floorboard creak. Down the hall, a light goes on, goes off. Closed bedroom door, her sh shadow darkens the crack of light. On my wall, two monsters fight, shadow play. And as you can see, the last page of this book has an illustration, but no haiku. So maybe when you're done reading the book, if you come and check it out from the library, when you're done reading the book on the last page, maybe you can make up your own haiku, your own very short poem to talk about the illustration on the page, or maybe anything that you've noticed at night. And the, fir the first type of kids' poetry that's very common is um, humor. It's funny poems. That, so a way to uh, make you laugh through poetry. And I have two, I have several books here that use this um, technique. And one of them is called It's Raining Pigs and Noodles and the poems are by Jack Prilutsky and the drawings by James Stevenson. And I'll read you one of the funny poems in here. So I'm going to read you one poem from this book and it's known as a shape poem. And as you can see, the poem itself is written in the shape. And the title is I'm Caught Up in Infinity. I'm caught up in infinity and hope it doesn't last. At first it was novelty, but that has worn off fast. I pass where I have passed before at every twist and bend. Infinity, it's clear to me, does not begin or end. It's boring in infinity. There's no relief in sight. It doesn't seem to matter. I'm going left or right. I'd like to leave, but haven't yet determined how I could. I'm caught up in infinity. I may be here for good. Another funny poem book is titled I Scream, You Scream. And you've all heard the little rhyme, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. So these are all funny uh, poems about food. It's titled uh, I Scream, You Scream, A Feast of Food Rhymes. And the author 
is the um, poet is Lillian Morrison, and the illustrations are by Nancy Dunaway. And I just wanted to show you one of the poems in here um, that is funny because it shows you that poetry sometimes happens by accident. So there's a root beer stand and it says root beer sold here. So just the name of the stand rhymes. So that's how you sometimes you can find poetry that happens by accident. Um, other funny poems are written by a very well-known um, kids poet and writer. And this book is called Everything on It, and it's poems and drawings by Shel Silverstein. And Shel Sil Silverstein also writes um, juvenile books with more pictures and less writing. So in um, everything on it, the that's the title of the first poem in this book. So that's often the case with poetry books. The title is the title of the first poem. And one of the poems in here is a riddle. And it reads, listen to my song. I am the strongest of the strong. I can wake a giant, I can make a giant cry. Who or what am I? And if you look at the picture, I'm hiding the answer with my fingers. But try and guess it. So if you want to guess the riddle and read other funny poems, you can always come and pick up the book by Shel Silverstein. Here we have another type of um, poetry book. And this one is titled Sweet Corn. Poems and illustrations by James Stevenson. And all the poems in this book have to do with summer. So that's another type of poetry book where all the poems follow a theme. And you can see there is one poem about a lemonade stand. On mornings in August, his store is a table. To joggers and bikers, he sells lemonade. But when the sun blazes and nobody's buying, he makes an umbrella out of his store. So poems about summertime. Then there are poetry books where the illustrations, or in this case, paintings, are nearly as important as the words themselves. And this one is titled Song of the Water Boatman and other pond poems. So all the poems have to do with uh, animals and plants that live in ponds. And the poems are written by Joyce Sidman and they are illustrated by Becky Prange. And I'm just going to show you a picture without reading it because it gives you the impression. There's a beautiful illustration, the poem about the dragonfly, and then this one also has a little write-up about dragonflies. So not only do you enjoy the pictures and the words in the poem itself, but you can learn about um, dragonflies and other pond creatures. And then another book, another book of that kind is this one titled Insectopedia, and is Poems and Paintings by Douglas Florian. Now you can see that sometimes the illustrator or the painter or the person who does the drawings is different than the author, but there are many poetry books where the author is also the illustrator. And as I mentioned earlier, in a way poetry is like painting, except you paint with words. So here's an example, the mosquitoes. This one is beautiful, the illustrations are beautiful, but it's also a little bit cheeky. So this is this poem, The Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are thin, mosquitoes are rude. They feast on your skin for takeout food. So funny as well as beautiful. Here's one other book called Hoof Prints. And this one is uh, written by Jesse Haas. And the poems are all about horses 
about the natural history of horses, how horses evolved, um, and their natural environment, and also how human beings have interacted with horses over the past thousands of years. And this one, as you can see, doesn't have any illustrations. So all the impressions created are created with the words themselves. Another poem, another book that has poems that help you learn about something is this one. It's Bone Poems. And it's written by Jeff Moss and illustrated by Tom Lee. And this one is published by the American Museum of Natural History. So the poems in there actually teach you about bones. And here is a funny one. It's an illustration of all the bones in a human body. And it's, uh, the title is 206, because we have 206 bones in our bodies. A grown-up human being has approximately 206 different bones in his or her body. Can you imagine then how many different bones a huge Tyrannosaurus Rex would have? Well, a T-Rex has approximately 206 different bones in his or her body, same as us. Mm. So in entertaining poems with fun illustrations that teach you about the human body. And then one last type of um, poetry book would be a book that is a collection of poems. So for example, this one is titled The 20th Century Children's Poetry Treasury. And it's written by Janet, put, in, put together by Janet S. Wong, um, illustrated by Janet S. Wong, who is a Chinese and Korean American. And the books were selected by Jack Prolatsky, who is himself an author. And one poem I wanted to show you in this book is, oh, this one, this page is fun. It has a bunch of shape poems, like the first one I read. But also, there is a poem, a very short poem in this book. And it's written by Janet S. Wong. And it's about noodles. Noodles for breakfast, noodles for lunch, noodles for dinner, noodles that crunch, noodles that twirl, noodles to slurp. I could eat noodles all day. Bup. And it's written by Janet S. Wong who is a Chinese and Korean American. And that, this example shows you that poetry can also give you an insight in different cultures. So also interesting. And this page here uh, talks about all different types of foods that different people from different cultures eat. And then the last thing I wanted to point out is that sometimes you find poetry in books which are not specifically um, books of poetry. So one example is this book titled The Canyon's Edge. And I think um, that you, also, you were also already introduced to this book earlier in one of the book talks earlier this year. But you can see on the spine that it's listed as an adventure book. However, much of the book is written in the form of poetry. So sometimes you don't expect it and you find poetry. And here's another example. This is a picture book titled Hush. And it's written by Ming Fong Ho and illustrated by Holly Mead. And also, once you begin reading it, you realize that it is written in the form of poetry. So poetry is really cool. It's free, it creates impressions, it creates feelings in you, as well as tell a story or give you information. And um, the craft for this week will be haiku and acrostic poem worksheets. And the worksheets, the two of the three worksheets that you will get in your craft kit are from the website of Ken Nesbitt, who is um, a pre, who was a 
uh, award-winning children's poet. And um, I'm going to read you one small poem from Ken Nisbet, and it's a poem written to his teddy bear. And it's from the book that's titled One Minute Till Bedtime, which is a collection of poems. And this is the poem to his teddy bear. Ted, Ted, climb in bed. Grab that book we're read, we've read and read. Tuck the blanket, tuck the spread. Here's a pillow for your head. Settle in, get ready, Ted. Here come poems just ahead. I hope you enjoy reading poetry this month. Remember that the crafts are available at the library and we are open uh, Mondays through Fridays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Bye.